Before we proceed any further, I do want to provide some clarifications on what are the difference between a schema or pedantic model uh, and our uh, ORM or SQL Alchemy model. And I think it's important that you guys understand that. And I do realize that there could be potentially some confusion as to what's the difference between them. Uh, ultimately, what are they trying to accomplish and why do we have both of them? So I've created a couple of slides and hopefully that helps sort things out and, hope, and hopefully it provides a little bit of clarification uh, if you guys were confused at that. Um, but just to look at our code, you'll notice that in our main.py file, we have one class called post here. And this is extending base model, which actually comes from the Pydantic library. And you can see we're importing Pydantic right here. So this is what's referred to as our schema. Uh, and uh, we also have our, and I don't even want to explain it yet. Uh, hopefully you guys already know what it is, but I have a couple of slides that hopefully make it a little bit more clear. But just to kind of show you where this is being referenced, it's being referenced in our path operations. So if you go to you know our create posts, which wherever that is right here, uh, you can see that we're passing that in right here and then saving it into a variable called post. So we're referencing it right here. Um, this is all about defining the shape of a request. Uh, and so that's the Pydantic model. Uh, the other model is the one that we have in models.py, which is the SQL Alchemy model. So this SQL Alchemy model defines what our database, our specific table looks like. Um, but let me pull up the slides just to show you guys, uh, you know, with some nice diagrams. So hopefully you guys get a better idea of what that is. All right, so let's start off by going over the schema models or the Pydantic model. So the schema or the Pydantic model defines the structure of a request and a response. Uh, and so uh, that way, you know, when it comes to creating a post, we can define exactly what the request should look like. So when we create a brand new post, we need the user to provide what's the title of the post, what's the content of the post. And optionally, they can also provide if it's published or not, but we've provided a default value so they don't actually have to send that. So what we do is we take the request and then we pass it through the Pydantic model. The Pydantic model will uh, perform a little bit of validation to make sure that all the fields that we need to actually create a brand new post are there uh, and that they are of the proper type. So if it's a title, it shouldn't be an integer. And if it's uh, uh, the published property, it shouldn't be a string or anything. It's just a simple Boolean. So that's what the Pydantic model or the schema model does. It's just there to provide some validation to ensure that the body, uh, all the data fields provided in the body of a request match up to what we want. And that's important because we don't ever want to give the clients, which is the web browser or the mobile phones or anything like that, uh, freedom to do whatever they want. We want to tell them exactly what we need for each specific path or route. And that's for the request. However, uh, we can also do this for the response. And we haven't actually done that yet, but we can actually define exactly what a response should look like. So, you know, as our, um, as our models get more complex, as uh, our database gets more complex, there's going to be a lot of fields when it comes to your posts and your users that you may not want to send back to the client when we send a response. So we can actually define a model to dictate FastAPI exactly the data fields that we should be sending back. And so that's what your schema and your Pydantic models do. They just ensure that the request and response are shaped in a specific way. Now, the other model is the SQL Alchemy model. So this is the one that we've been working on with the past couple of lectures, right? And these are responsible for de defining the columns of our posts, table within Postgres, right? So it's gonna define all the different attributes within a specific table. And then we use that post model to perform queries to our database. We use it to create, delete, and update entries within our database. Um, but this model is fundamentally different than the Pydantic model. So that's why I created this video. I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood what were the differences between those and understand why we need them both. Technically, we don't need the Pydantic models, but um, you know, when it comes to building out APIs, you want to be as strict as possible when it comes to what kind of data can we receive and send to the user. Uh, and so Pydantic just ensures that uh, you know, everything just matches up with what we expect. 